Hello students, this is Dr. Ben. I'd like to take a few minutes to work out a problem out of chapter 5. It has to do with the topic of circular motion dynamics. So here we have a situation where an object is moving in a uniform circle, a uniform circular motion in a horizontal direction. So you can see there's a puck on this tabletop and that puck is attached to a hanging mass by a string and the string goes through a hole in the, in the table. And so we're asked to consider the motion of the puck in the circle um, as it's influenced by the hanging mass. And if we read the problem, uh, this is a, a, a proof style problem where we're given some information but only in terms of the symbols. So the puck has a mass of little m, the table's frictionless, the hanging mass has a mass capital M, the speed of the puck is V, and the radius of the circle is R, and we might need to also use the symbol G for the acceleration due to gravity, and what we're asked to find in this situation is an expression for the speed of the puck in terms of these various quantities. All right, so we have to solve this problem in stages, so what we want to do first of all is to consider the motion of the puck. So, because the puck is moving in a horizontal circle, it would probably be more convenient for us to draw a sketch of puck's motion as seen from the top or from above. And so, in that view, we're going to see the puck simply go around in a circle. And if we follow the, the picture that was given at the instant shown, the puck is over on the left-hand side of the diagram, and there's the center. And if I would draw the velocity vector at that point, it would point straight down. And we remember that it is perpendicular to the radius because the velocity is along the tangent of the circle. And I could also indicate the radius of this circle that's on here. And the angular velocity is um, counterclockwise. All right, and so I need to consider the motion of the puck, but I really need to deal with the dynamics of the puck's motion. So I need to use Newton's second law in order to, to consider that. So I'll write that the acceleration of the puck is equal to the net force that acts on the puck divided by its mass. So from the top, we see a force that acts on the puck that points towards the center of the circle, and that would simply be the tension that's in the string. There are two other forces that act on the puck, um, both the weight and the normal force caused by the table, but those are vertical and they don't point towards the center, so they're not responsible for the circular motion. It's the tension that's the one that is responsible. So the acceleration of the puck I'll label as AC, and then the net force we can see from our diagram is only the tension, and then I would divide that by the mass. I remember the formula for the centripetal acceleration, V squared over R, and then that's equal to T over M. And so if I want to find an expression for the velocity, I need to figure out what is the value of the tension in the string because we're not allowed to keep that, uh, that variable in our answer. All right, so what I need to do now is to shift gears and to consider the hanging mass. And the hanging mass is at rest, so its acceleration which would be in the y direction in a coordinate system would be equal to zero. And so we can use the techniques from chapter two, which would actually be Newton's first law, in order to solve this. So if I would draw a force diagram for the hanging mass, I would have a tension force that points upwards and a weight force that points downwards, but the acceleration is equal to zero. So according to Newton's um, Newton's second law, I would say that the net force on the puck, I'm sorry, on the hanging mass would be equal to zero. So I would have T minus capital MG equals zero, 
and therefore capital T equals capital M times G. So I'll put a box around that equation, and now I can substitute the value of the tension that I just found into my expression from the first part, and I would have V squared over R is equal to now capital MG, which is the tension divided by the mass, and if I do a couple steps of algebra, solve for the velocity, I have V squared equals big M G R over little m, and therefore take the square root of both sides. The velocity would be the square root of big M G times R divided by the mass. All right, so I just want to check that we have the units right, because it's a little hard to tell without numbers. So inside the square root, mass would be measured in kilograms, g would be measured in meters per second squared, and then the radius would be measured in meters, and then the mass that's in the denominator would be kilograms. So we see that the kilograms cancel out. I have meters over second squared times meters, the square root of that, and so that equals meters per second, and those are the units of uh, speed, and so I'm pretty confident that my expression is correct, and I can definitely see that it has the right units. So if we were given numerical values for the mass of the puck and the radius of the puck's orbit, the mass size of the hanging mass, then we would have enough information to come up with a numerical value for this velocity.